Collaboration instead of competition is important for solving challenges in the industry. My colleague David got the opportunity to talk about recycling, circular economy, and the future of paperboard with Tetra Pak and its longtime partner, Stuart Enso. What are the global challenges facing the packaging industry today and what role can innovation play in solving them? To discuss these and other questions, I'm joined today by Hanu Kasurinen from Store Ento and by Anke Hampel from Tetra Pak. Hanu and Anke, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, Hanu, if I could just ask you please to introduce yourself. My name is Hannu Kasurinen. I'm executive vice president responsible for Store Enso's packaging materials uh, business. Stura Enzo is a renewable materials company. Our motto is to <coughs> replace uh, non-renewable materials with renewable materials. And Anke, if you could also please introduce yourself. My name is Anke Hampel and I'm very proud to lead the collaboration with our supply partners as Director in Innovation and Sustainability at Tetra Pak. Uh, I'm based in Lausanne, Switzerland and I joined Tetra Pak about four, year, four years ago. Uh, from the consumer goods industry uh, with a passion to make packaging more sustainable and a strong belief that we can only do this um, in co-creation and this very transparent sharing within uh, partnerships. Thanks. So Hannu, uh, first question to you then to kind of uh, set the scene here. What would you say are the main challenges facing the packaging industry today? I'd say the biggest challenge we face today is, is <clears throat> obviously to sort of a fight against the, the climate change. And in particular, we have the issue of, of sort of littering the oceans with, with plastics. And uh, that's something we are working now actively. And uh, our medication to that is obviously to <clears throat> work with the possibility to replace fossil packaging materials with renewable fibers and then make sure that they are also recycled, hence uh, they are not entering up into the oceans, whereas we can then utilize them multiple times in, in different ways. So it's about re-innovating the packaging and making them more sustainable. So Anke, from uh, Tetra Pak's perspective, uh, how much of the innovation that you're involved with is in the uh, sustainability space? The majority, majority, I would say. So we have had a tremendous shift of our uh, DE uh, investments uh, over the last two years, actually moved into the uh, sustainability driven innovation agenda. And actually, uh, we also have seen, um, I think, close to a six fold increase of the uh, investments into the DNA area, given the challenges ahead. DNA, you mean development and engineering? Yes, apologies. So development engineering is the name of the uh, R&D team at Tetra Pak. So, uh, Hanu, when it comes to sustainability, what is it that you're actually trying to achieve? What, uh, what are your ambitions when it comes to sustainability? Well, obviously it is to have a sustainable solution to consumers and, and allowing them the consumers, the brand owners, retailers to reduce the, the CO2 emissions and make the packaging more sustainable. And uh, this is obviously happening, as I explained, through the recycling and then replacing the, the fossil structures from the packaging materials. And uh, it is a long journey because uh, recycling is an area where there's obviously already a good collection rate, a recycling rates with, with our packaging grades and board materials in general. But then the more you have sort of a coated laminated boards, the more complexity comes around. And, and hence we have to then work with the entire value chain, with the converters like Tetra Pak, with number of brand owners, and, and then, you know, set the game rules, involve the waste management companies and others. But the idea here is, is really that we can offer then by far more sustainable, environmental friendly, packaging solutions without sacrificing issues like food safety, which are very vital. And obviously making sure that the food waste is, is not going to increase because that's a very big uh, cause of, of, of emissions. Mm. So Anki, I presume that uh, this with uh, removing fossil fuel based materials from 
packaging is something that's important for Tetra Pak? Actually, that's spot on. And that's what our strategy 2030 is about. Uh, we are talking about leading the sustainability transformation. Um, and uh, as Hanno was pointing out, this will only be possible by really focusing on renewable materials. We have a very good, strong starting point, which is that more than 70% of our materials used today in the packaging are actually renewable um, uh, materials, um, actually fiber-based. We also have already done um, a large trans transformation in terms of the polymers that are used, as Hanno was describing, for coating. Uh, to use their renewable polymers or renewable, renewable source. And that's the area where we continue to improve. But what we're really trying to drive together with our partners um, like Stora Enso is to arrive at the fully uh, cellulose-based packaging, which then will help us to actually uh, come into a, a full recycling stream, ideally into a circular loop. Uh, but I think already increasing this packaging structure into something that um, we can really be used in a normal fiber recycling stream will be excellent. And that's what we are aiming for. Hannu, could you explain to us this, uh, this uh, challenge between this, uh, the balance between um, sustainability, removing the uh, fossil fuel based plastics from uh, packaging and um, at the same time maintaining food safety. W what is it that's the challenge there? First of all, I think we have to give a recognition to plastic that it's a fantastic material in terms of uh, barrier properties and it has been able to kind of uh, deliver properties that are maybe even too highly engineered. If I take as an example that I have here a paper cup and uh, you know this is a paper cup with some uh, plastic coatings and this is supposed to hold coffee uh, 24 hours, I would be actually happy to have it only lasting half an hour or two hours. So we can, we can ask the question that are actually the current products already over designed and if we want to get fast moving, we may have to make some uh, or do some compromises in order first, like I said, reduce the, the, the fossil barriers and then gradually replace them by mono, mono material fiber based barriers or other barriers that then disappear in the recycling process and they don't sort of leave uh, microplastics to the nature. And uh, this is complicated uh, sort of a technology <coughs> driven challenge that we are solving. Uh, we do it now in, in a very tight partnership with customers like Tetra Pak and, and multiple sort of uh, external uh, uh, stakeholders who can bring us then the best technology and innovation. And um, I'd say it's a marathon, but it all starts from the recycling, then reducing the layers and finally then replacing the, the, the fossil barrier layers. So Anki, from uh, Tetra Pak's, what's Tetra Pak's perspective uh, on the, uh, the uh, recycling issue, particularly when it comes to the innovation side of things? As Hanno was already describing, there are so many stakeholders in this that we are bringing together. So uh, we have been obviously focusing on this for many years. Um, used beverage cartons um, have been, have their own recycling stream. Uh, and we are focusing on making this work, as Hanno was describing while at the same time making sure that in the future it will all be in one recycling stream. So these two efforts we have ongoing. Uh, if I come to the used beverage carton recycling stream, and that's also where the Stora Enso announcement is very important, we are trying to make sure we have the right geographic uh, coverage. But at the same time, we are also trying to make sure that these investments will be valuable in the future when we are making sure the uh, beverage cartons actually are made as close as possible to 100% of fiber. Um, so both things are taken into consideration. And we also will be able to use these uh, partnerships on the recycling of today's cartons to understand how our future structures actually are working in a recycling process. Are we good enough with what we're designing to make sure we can separate them well enough? Is the fiber yield good enough? Do we have too much water? Do we need to transport these somewhere else? Uh, what do we do with the residues? Do they have value in another recycling loop? Or do we need to do something different there? Um, uh, discussions like, does it help to have a biodegradable coating there? 
um, is it okay to have pigments from a thin metallization layer? What happens to them in the, in the process uh, in a recycling mill? All these questions we're working on, we are closely involved there also in this project with the respective equipment suppliers. So that's one important part of the ecosystem. But we're also working with other partners that might take the recycler that comes out of the polymers and aluminum that might still be in there and make sure that the uh, process they're using, for example, pyrolysis, uh, can deal with the aluminum particles that might still be in there. And um, we are digging in many, many different areas there to make sure we find the good solution and bring the right partners together.